Peter Kilimo is a small businessman on the streets of Nairobi. He makes a living selling old magazines and books. He is also feeling the pinch of the rising cost of living. Since March this year, the prices of consumer goods and services have been skyrocketing. It means Peter Kilimu often cannot afford to eat. He has been selling an average of 100 papers, I mean 100 newspapers per day. The sales have gone down to less than 50, 40, 45. That is from morning up to evening. Lunch becomes a luxury, so you don't even go for lunch. You only care for transport, sparing the little that you have for evening, for the, for the supper. So it becomes, the life is becoming unbearable. For millions of consumers, it began to get tough in November. Since then, inflation has gone from 3.84 to a new high of 12.05% in just five months. It is really a problem because everything is up. Fuel, food, past fare. Like the fares have hiked. I used to pay 20 shillings, now I'm paying 50 shillings. Lately, the maize were, the maize flour, it was going at around 70, 60 there, but now it's a hundred bob. What has worried me is that cost of flour, because uh, the cost keeps on increasing, but my wages keeps on, uh, remains constant. Last month, Kenya saw street demonstrations against rising inflation. Hardest hit are middle and low income earners who have to spend up to a third of their income on food. Kenyans are completely worried about the issue of food. Yes. Food prices are becoming completely unbearable because of fuel prices. Somebody has allowed uh, fuel prices to be completely unaffordable in this country. Arguments have been advanced that are because of the external factors. We are not mad people. Yes. We know that what we are not in control of, the yes. external factors in the Northern Africa and the Arab world crisis, there's nothing we can do about it. Yes. But we know there's so much we can do about it in terms of the local factors that yes. are fueling the issue of fuel prices. The government has moved in to ease the suffering of the poor by zero rating duty on kerosene, maize and wheat, as well as reducing taxes on diesel. You see what the formula has done is to work on fairness. Fair, we talk about fair pricing because uh, now we can be able to capture all the costs which are uh, incurred in the, uh, all the way from importation of the products, processing, transport and all that, then we, we, we add a margin, which we believe is a fair margin uh, for the world marketing companies, and it's a known margin, and then we give a, a maximum price. And uh, actually this, the, 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 the important thing is here, we are not saying that you must sell at this given price. We are saying you cannot sell beyond this price. So the marketers are free to compete below that uh, maximum uh, price for each of the products during the month or during the period that is uh, set, that that price is set. The government has also increased minimum wages by 12.5%. Manufacturers have opposed attempts to increase this minimum wage, saying it is not sustainable in the current economic climate. Our take as a private sector is that um, a demand is a demand. I mean, there is expectations based on some of the indicators that they use to calculate why they think 60% is the level that should be up. Um, the private sector has looked at that and said, if you look at a cut of the window as of now, that may be a yes because of the indicators that you are sitting on at this moment in time. But wage increments should be based on longer term indicators. We should be looking at rolling averages of, say, the price of food, the price of fuel, um, the price of energy, and all these other indicators on a rolling average basis. So you're looking at the underlying trends, which will probably take you know, an average of, say, about a three-year window, a rolling average window. And that is really where you should look at to say, if you project that over the next two or three years, or even one year or two, depending on the interval, and ours is a two-year planning cycle, then where do you expect it to end up? And really, the wage increments should be based on that projection rather than reacting to what I call sp uh, spikes. The next few months are likely to be daunting for economists working at the government's planning and finance ministries. Analysts reckon that the country needs to explore serious measures to stop the poor living hand to mouth.